Welcome to another edition of the Audio Barnyard Podcast, brought to you by VOJumpstart.com. As always, I'm Donnie Barnes with Don Barnes. And today we're talking about, should you crowdsource your tech advice? Whether you're a voiceover person, narrator, audiobook producer, podcaster, whatever it may be, let's say you're just getting into this business, you're really excited, you wanna take action right now, right away, and get off and running quickly. Should you go into an open forum on Reddit, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever it may be, and just ask a question right away. Hey, what DAW should I use? What software should I use? What microphone? How should I treat my room? Is that the best idea? Is that the smartest way to take action right away to get off the ground in your career? We're gonna tell you that maybe that's not the smartest thing to do. Maybe there's a smarter way to take action right away. Maybe do some research, some homework, and vet the people you listen to. So Don, I know that you see these kinds of questions all the time. The forums can be great. The wisdom of crowds can be very real. Lots of helpful people that want to help other people get started or improve. That's great. But when you see somebody just post this, hey, what software should I use? What microphone should I use? You see that question posted in one of your forums. What's your initial gut response? Uh, the initial one, I probably cringe a little bit at knowing that it's going to be, hey, let's get the popcorn. And everybody has an opinion. In, 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 in most of the good groups, you have a whole set of people that are working really hard to pay it forward and be good citizens. And it's awesome. The only problem is you have a whole bunch, whole set of people that have a limited perspective, maybe because they've only used one mic or they've only used one DAW or they've only used one treatment in the room. They haven't tested it across the whole thing. So what happens? I'm going to tell you, if you ask me about pizza, I'm going to tell you my favorite pizza. Now, the question is, does that mean it's the best pizza in the world? It's the pizza that if you had a choice, would, would you go and buy that pizza knowing what choices are in your area? Plus, hey, in my area, I might have only one brand of pizza that's decent. And in your area, there are 15 brands, depending on where you are around the world. So it's the same with food. It's the same. The people that answer first may be excellent and the great answers and people with perspective, but it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. So... What do you look for in vetting people to see whether they have the proper perspective to make their advice really worth listening to deeply? Uh, a couple things. So, hey, first thing is it's almost uh, trust but verify. You'll want to go through, if I provide advice for you, don't assume I know what I'm talking about at first. Uh, if, if, if somebody's good at this and somebody does a lot of it, it's one of two things. They either have a tremendous depth of knowledge or... Sometimes they're just trying to be helpful and pay it forward and they're just starting out. And it's your job as the one that's posted the question to go ahead and figure out whether my advice is seasoned and has a broader perspective. And having a broad perspective is not something that somebody has at first, but ugh, the frustrating part for someone like me is you have so many great people working hard to pay it forward and, but then they only know one DAW or one mic or one way to treat a room. And they think that because it's worked for them, that it's a great solution for everybody. But that isn't always the case. <laughs> so what are some good questions to ask if you're somebody who's newer or you're looking to upgrade your game and somebody gives you a piece of advice, what are some good follow-up questions to ask? Uh, one of the things that I like to ask is, okay, if we didn't do that one, so we don't pick that mic. Do you have any other choices and why do, would you consider these other ones? And anybody who's been around a while will have one to three other alternatives to whatever they're using. I mean, for let's take mics. Uh, you're using, I know you have multiple mics. So let's, if you came in and said, oh, this is the pretend back in the day where you had one mic, this is the ultimate mic. The first thing is, okay, but if you didn't have that one, you know, what other mics would you recommend and why? If they really have perspective, they'd say, well, the mic I'm using is this, but if I wasn't using that, there's, oh, there's two other choices that are really, really good. And in a lot of these areas, there might be a half dozen choices that are really, really good. And anybody that's been around a while will know, all right, here's my first choice. Here's my second, third choice. This is what I would do. And then I'd have uh, some reasons around why I would do that. And one of the other issues you run into, I think, in, in open forums like this is sometimes the more experienced people tend to be the busiest people too. And they might not necessarily have time to respond to every question or every thread. 
And so sometimes the people that respond the fastest and fill up these threads the most quickly, again, well-meaning people, but they're often people with less experience, aren't they? Uh, almost by definition. It's not always the case. <laughs> Demo me will respond all the time. Sometimes when I'm busy and I'll push back something else, I end up staying up later at night than I should have because I, I was willing to answer a couple more questions. So sometimes you will get that. Somebody very seasoned will take extra time to, to put in a very thoughtful answer. The thing that can be frustrating, though, is that I see some of my peers who are excellent and very seasoned. And what happens is that guy goes ahead and puts in a, a, just a two-sentence thing because they know they're actually right. They only answer really quick. But then the people think he's either rude or that he, you know, they blow off his advice and, of course, gives them no incentive in the future to come back and provide advice when uh, they blow off his advice. But you do kind of need to look at let this back up. The first thing to do is take some time and, and go start seeing, OK, does Don post more than once every two months? Um, and if he posts a lot, are his answers thoughtful and well respected? And then if you can figure out, well, what's his backstory? Does that gal really know a whole bunch about voicing or is she just like to answer questions? And boy, if she likes to answer questions, that's fantastic. But you need to make sure that her backstory fits the answers and that she also has perspective so that instead of saying, I love this mic, it's the only mic for anybody. Uh, do you use any other mics? Have you used any other mics? Everybody that's been around a while, they definitely will have used more than one mic. Everybody that's been around a while will have used more than one DAW usually. That isn't always the case. They may have start, started with something and they're still sticking with it. But that it's still a situation where they have a lot of experience with that tool. Yeah, and, and different situations do lend themselves to different solutions, don't they? And so I know you, for example, you have just about every DAW out there on your computer. And not only do you have it on your system, but you've used them all pretty extensively. So you can speak to some extent to all of them and their pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses. That's something that not a lot of people are willing to do. And it's also something that most people, frankly, don't have time to do. I don't have time to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, finding those people who are maybe willing to put in that extra effort to have tested a bunch of different solutions and to have gone through the process of acquiring that wisdom to be able to tell you when this solution might work best and when this other solution might be better. That's something that does take some time to vet and, and maybe requires you to take a step back, right? Instead of, again, it's taking smart action and just instead of just taking blind action. So taking time to vet people instead of just posting a question right away and then taking the first response as gospel. Yeah, you definitely, if you take the first response, uh, you kind of get what you pay for. And remember, free advice is very often just okay. And it can range from excellent, excellent, excellent to free advice. I mean, it, 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 to where it's really unvetted. It's somebody that has a very limited perspective and it's good. I, I, I love passionate people. I love people that want to help other people. I think that's fantastic. So I have great respect if that's what somebody wants to do. Where it, comes a, where it becomes a problem is where I've only had the one pizza and I'm telling you, this is the best pizza in the world. And you say, well, yeah, I know, but what about, are there any others? No, I only eat this pizza because it is the best. How do you know if you haven't tried the other one? Um, yeah, but it is the best. And if I, I, sometimes people can be very, very loud about their opinion. And your job as a reader, as somebody looking for information, is to figure out how to vet that person, see what their backstory is. And if you all takes a little bit of time, meaning a couple days, you can go ahead and get backstory on anybody in terms of in these groups. Anybody who is well-regarded will have multiple mentions of other people mentioning them at the same time. And it won't just be them always talking about the same things. So, so the people that tend to post in all caps, those are the people we should listen to, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the right place to go. All caps is good. Uh, me shouting. Uh, yeah. I should also warn you, people that are very, very seasoned are, tend to be very, very busy. Therefore, they will sometimes put in short answers. Don't discount a short answer as somebody who's being rude if they end up. If, so then you go figure out, ah, that gal has 450 books. That gal's worked for these six major companies in terms of publishers or has these great clients. Uh, she's, she's just rude. 
No, she's busy. And she actually is trying to be super helpful. And sometimes she's condensing years worth of, of experience into here's, here's two lines or four lines where somebody else is putting in 15 paragraphs, but they don't really know. So that's the problem with crowdsourcing all this. I really think that for most people, it's if you were to take a week when you're new and go through any new group that you're in or new Reddit, uh, subreddit that you're in and, and figure out who the people are that are providing reasonable answers and have perspective and have a good backstory, which just simply means they've been in the business long enough to have tried different solutions, talk to people and often have a great respect for somebody who's doing one of the other good solutions as well. So you come to me for a DAW, I recommend a certain one as my primary, but if you were to ask me, I always have my next couple in, that I've already tested. I know that they do a great job and I might light something. I may have, well, this is why I prefer, this is my number one, but I have number two and number three. And it's the same with mics. It's the same with room treatment, same with a lot of things but you're really experienced people, they're not going to always have the time to dish out all sorts of detailed information and why I picked this. And yeah, I spent three years doing X or Y to come to this conclusion. I went down this blind alley. They're just gonna give you the answer sometimes. And then you need to figure out, okay, Donnie only posted two lines, but he's got enough experience doing 10,000 of these things that he is the voice of experience on that. Even if he wasn't Dale Carnegie that day because he was on his way to go broadcast something, he saw it. Ah, I know the answer to that. I'm going to put it in there. So you can't always, de you can't always define it by short versus long versus loud, all caps versus not. You have to take the time to go through and do a little bit of vetting, find out if they can answer a follow-up question or two. And then you go through and look and see who are the people that are constantly providing reasonable advice. Yep. I think that's great advice. And again, if you're brand new or if you've been at this a while and you're looking to up your technology game for spoken word narration, we have uh, great programs available for you at S1 or at VOJumpstart.com, whether it's our Studio One Jumpstart, our RX Jumpstart courses and several more. Or if you just want to get a free 15 minute evaluation from Don, you can send him your room sample, your current sound, talk about your unique setting right now and your unique needs. He'll give you a free 15 minute consultation and talk about solutions that might possibly work for you. You can get all of that at VOJumpstart.com. Until next time, for Don Barnes, I'm Donnie Barnes. This has been the Audio Barnyard Podcast. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.